How to Get Involved in Orisha with No Added Stress. Baba Sixto, Quan Enterprises, Incorporated Publications. Introduction. Before an individual becomes a godchild, they should be attended to for the sole purpose of getting their life in order. This does not imply giving them entities or initiations right away, especially without them knowing what they're getting into. Individuals need a series of strong ritual work to get rid of the negative karma they've been exposed to since birth. This is accomplished through consistent readings and ritual work for some time, along with support and understanding how spirituality works and connecting to it effectively. Hence, this is not an overnight or simple process. Step 01. Individuals should be attended by Alorisha or Babalawo, priest in the first year at least three or more times, or once every three months, in essence, with every change of season. The first few readings are to identify the negative karma and the traumas they've experienced. These investigations are necessary so that proper and correct work, spiritual healing therapy solutions, is performed in expunging all the negatives on the route towards securing positive occurrences. People don't realize that ritual is necessary for every traumatic event in their life. The energies or influenza of experienced tragedies stay embedded in their aura, psyche, and consciousness, and it takes quite a few healings to release bad karma associated with these events, causes and effects. Also, to be expunged is negative DNA passed down from birth, as well as Absorbed through bodily fluid transfers during sexual relations or experiences from current, previous failed, or casual relationships. People carry the energies of their previous lovers from one person to the next. Then, they wonder why new relationships fail or don't last. Soap, water, and spiritual baths alone do not cleanse the powerful energy transfer that occurs within relationships. Note that traumas caused by environmental stressors, such as living in hostile environments, hospitalizations, incarcerations, and dysfunctional homes are to be expunged too. Step 02. Alorisha priests or Babalawo should support the individual in the setting up of their spiritual shrine so that they can begin to devote time to their enlightenment and connection to their spirit guides, ancestors, and other forces. This devotional process should take about six months to a year. Step 03. Elders should then support the individual in having at least two spiritual masses that year, get good mediums, so that they can become aware of some of those spirit guides and ancestors closest to them. These have been listening to their prayers, and it's good to know that they have been receiving light, acknowledgement, or the power of the Holy Spirit. These spirits are of great asset and one day, through subsequent readings, will ask to be fed libation or live animal, per elder divination. Step 04. The new godchild should next be taken to have their guardian orisha marked, preferably by way of ifa, e king casting. This should be done before even giving them eeli keys. Most elders rush and give eeli keys to people via default orisha obatala. But, they know that a more solid way is to place the eeli keys of the guardian orisha last during the ritual, when it is known. Step 05. Now, that the individual Orisha guardian is known, Alorisha priests will know if they can continually attend the individual or not, depending upon the taboos or restrictions associated with the godparents Orisha. Consequently, a responsible Alorisha priest will not continue with a godchild if they are forbidden from touching the person's head. They, however, can continue attending them as a spiritual advisor and spiritual godparent of sorts, but not take to the priesthood. Step 06. The individual must bring a white plate with two coconuts, two candles, and a small monetary offering to the Alorisha priest shrine. The Alorisha priest will break a coconut, OB, and toss it to verify that their Orisha accepts the new godchild in the house. Step 07. Next, they should have a Babalawo feed the egg goon of the Orisha that walks with the individual. Many people associate this divinity with Palomayambi or spirit guide or who's to say what other entity. But, it is not, it is the pure spiritual reflection of the guardian Orisha as an egg goon that walks with the individual and facilitates the communication between the Orisha guardian and the individual, at their Ori, head, and Oyee, shadow, level. Its terminology is egg goon chebo elaluyo, or egg goon of the Orisha that walks with the individual, 
no name just title. If a male orisha a male animal is used, if a female orisha, then a female animal is used in the ritual sacrifice. Step 08. Now, that the godchild has their eeli keys, and they have fed the eggun chebo elaluyo. They are to feed their guardian orisha by way of their godparents' orisha's shrine so that their godparents' orisha recognizes the godchild's good heart and intentions. For example, if you are a child of Ochun, you are to offer two hens to your godmother's Ochun from your heart out of respect to the Ochun of your godmother, because one day, hopefully you'll be initiated from this Orisha shrine. Step 09. On another day from their heart, the godchild should offer two fowls to the guardian Orisha of their godparent out of love and respect for their godparent and the Orisha shrine. This way their guardian orisha and the orisha of their godparent are in tune with helping the new godchild get their life in order and support their forward progress towards orisha priesthood. Through the completion of this stage 09, if the Babalawo and Alorisha priests working together have good acheg the person should have most of all their situations resolved. Hence, a good job, a good mate, and a good and happy home in essence, living well and on their way towards better things. Step 10. Now, comes taking the individual to a Babalawo to receive their warriors, Eshu, Ogun, Ashosi, Ozen, or have them consecrated. These should be first, then the Alorisha priest should consecrate an Elegua, solid stone no face, Esha satisfies arbitrary forces, can cross over to the dark side, and egg Gun Gun, while Elegua satisfies arbitrary forces, but doesn't cross over to the dark side as Esha does. Step 11. Now, that one has warriors, the godparent can give them Yamayaolikan, EBGs, and Orishoko as needed, if feasible, and any other Orisha before Osha, as the Alorisha priest readings determined or Ifa readings dictate. These are auxiliary Orisha that support positive destinies in the godchild's life securing the economic well-being for them to eventually reach crowning Osha. Also, if this is as far as the godchild is to come or willing to go, then so be it. Not everyone who enters Orisha's worship has come to become initiated as a priest. Step 12. Now, take the godchild to receive the hand of Ifa, this is the oracle of destiny. Orenmala marks an individual's destiny, or walk of life, independent of having Osha, or not. This is important because the person will know before having Osha, what they are up against in their life. Even if an individual makes Osha, their destiny doesn't change. Osha enhances their well-being and gives them a purpose as priests in society as part of the fulfillment of their destiny. The Osha Ida defines how each Osha Orisha will support the destiny, but the destiny is identified by way of Aremala, casting Ifa, e king divination. Imagine how many people have Osha and don't have a hand of Ifa, this means that their destiny has not been made known to them, even when having Osha. I suggest that during the consecration of their hand of Ifa, and since Ifa is speaking at that moment, and if they have not already been scratched in Palo, they should ask the question if they need to be scratched in Palo by their hand through E King at that moment of receiving the Oracle of Destiny. Also, the Palo entity could in many cases synchronize with their Orisha guardian, but doesn't necessarily need to be so. Most Alorisha and Palo priests prefer for this to be determined by the Palo elders. Make sure the Alorisha and Palo elders do a proficient investigation, and this is not an overnight process. Insight Many people receive warrior's hand of Ifa, marked Orisha's guardian, all at once. But, doesn't necessarily have to be. For my godchildren, I've broken things up this way into three interval periods in time, one is T. Orisha guardian, second warriors, after Ialikes, and third hand of Ifa later on. This is so that the godchild does not incur a high cost all at once. Normally, it's accomplished between a two to three year period, or sooner, depending on the situation. Splitting things up and taking one's time is not as stringent on the godchild's pocket as otherwise. This also gives time for the godchild to see results as they resolve the various complex situations of their life, throughout an interval period working with elders, learning, developing spirituality, and living their life. Orisha practice is a lifelong endeavor. If there isn't an emergency, then take your time. Do as many cleanings, ebo, as necessary, you will experience many positive results, because you need proof. 
The proof is not obtained with one cleaning or receiving one thing only. Step 13. Finally, maintaining, this involves routinely once or twice a year feeding a gungun, warriors, a hand of ifa, orenmala, and other related orisha along with getting at least two readings and ebo per year by godparents until they are ready to become priests. Closure Unfortunately, people come to orisha in crisis mode when there are problems, and then get used to working orisha in crisis mode alone, but it doesn't have to be this way. Once a person resolves their crises, they should follow up with the Alorisha priests, or Babalawo, to always secure a blessed future. The hard part is not just getting to where you are going or obtaining the things you need, it is maintaining what has taken so much hard work to obtain. In closing, I'd like to emphasize that Ifa is the last word. This means that as long as spiritualists, Alorisha, Palo, and other society elders determine resolutions for their godchildren through their investigations of many situations. Don't bring them to Ifa unless there is a need to clarify an important situation. Because once you do Ifa Romola will have the last word as mandated by Olofan Olodumer, and there is no going back without consequences. Blessings to all, from Baba Sixto I Wariroti Ifa Odara, Aboru, Aboy, Aebochiche.